This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome back. Welcome back. You're listening to another episode of The Real Down. Your host, Sam Jones, here with my good friend, co host, Dan Perry. What's going what on? What up? What up? What's happening, man? Hey, it's uh, this day's almost over, and I couldn't be happier about that. We'll put it this way. We'll put it that way. <laughs> it's been a, it's yeah. been a trying day. It's been a Monday on a Wednesday. You know, so, I'm ready to fish. So this whole week has been difficult to try to get through. Well, so funny enough, I I thought that's how this week was going to go down. I thought I was going to go slow, and I was going to be just like dragging. It's been the exact opposite. It's flying by. Um, I still have a garage full of tackle scattered everywhere. To, in fact, I, I started today. I scheduled myself an hour and a half of tackle organization today. I'm kind of changing some things up. And I dumped like a six-pound box of opened tungsten all over my garage floor. Uh. So I had to go in and resize and reorganize all of that, which took more than the half an hour I had allotted. So that would have been a five-minute thing turned into an almost two-hour ordeal. So uh, no fun. I have a lot of tungsten. Uh, I learned that. They were wicked weight, so, so I mean, they're good. They didn't That's right. Anything. That's oh. right. That's right. They didn't. They didn't. And funny enough, in that box, I carry other brands of tungsten to show the difference when I'm out on the water with people and talking about it. And that stuff oh. got beat up real bad because it hit concrete floor from like five foot, you know. But anyway, yeah. enough about that. Uh, how, how you doing, my man? Doing good. Just, uh, you know, working, working, trying to. Just a lot of life going on, but, you know, ready okay. for this weekend, ready to get fishing, ready for the upcoming couple of tournaments, and especially next week. So, yeah, yeah. Got, got a whole lot to look forward to and a lot to talk about tonight. There's been a lot of tournaments, a lot going on, and a lot coming up. So, yeah, it's a good day to be talking about kayak fishing. There is. There is a ton going on. And uh, this week, kind of different. We don't have a guest uh per se this week because we do have a lot to cover so we're we're going to go through that and then we're going to kind of talk a little bit at the end of this thing about how you and i are prepping and getting ready for a big event coming up the uh the first ever bass nation kayak trail series event on logan martin that's right Right here, an hour away, so close to home. I'm so, so close. I know, and I know at, at one point you are kind of wavering um, if you were going to yeah. be able to make it happen. I'm so stoked to see that you're going to gonna be there. And then on the back side of this, we have all the fun of the Bassmaster Classic and the Expo. Super pumped up about that. Um, so, yeah, we'll get into all that here at the end. But first, let's, uh, let's talk about some pretty awesome tournaments that went down this past weekend yeah for sure the first one was a kbf pro tour on claremont chain of lakes which is somewhere just south of the harris chain and kind of southwest for Orlando. i had to look it up um but the, there was a two-day event with 21 anglers and of course the big, do big dog mr chatterbait uh mr jody queen came away with a win not just a win dude spanked the field by 12 wow. inches 192.75 uh good old hooked on water waters wild waters himself mr drew gregory 180.75 which is also great i mean two days in florida is always going to be good but 180 yeah. that's i mean day, that, that, that's day, a good yeah day two is 94 inches i mean that's the i think that was the second biggest bag of the tournament um Coming in with 94 inches, that was really solid. I was impressed to see the the run he made on 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 day two. Yep. And then third place. I mean, it's crazy how you hear about the same names all the time. And third was yep. Corey Dreyer. So it's just you know just the best of the best, and they're just always at the top. 
every single week. You know, they, I mean, they just always do good. And a- anybody who doesn't think uh, Drew Gregory isn't for real, number two, I mean, he showed out at the uh, national championship this year, but he's as good as anybody on, you know, that fishes elite level tournament. So, yep, congratulations to those three. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking to that, it's something that I talked about quite a bit last year um, on different podcasts and on our podcast was we're starting to see this group, right? You know, we kind of expected what names would start, the cream would start to rise to the top. Um, and we're starting to see this group kind of pull out ahead a little bit and kind of make become yeah. those bigger names that... Uh, that we see in other parts of the sport, you know, um, and uh, it's happening uh, exactly kind of like I thought it would. Um, so no surprise to see those three at the top of this event. And, and it was a fun one. And you know what was kind of interesting about this? I was watching this in conjunction to the other major tours that were down there in Florida uh, that were going on and can kind of comparing the results and, um, you know, the kayak guys really did well in comparison to uh, to the yeah. tournament side, to the bass boat side. I, so. I, I think kind of how you're saying 2020 going into it, it is the year of opportunity where, you know, uh, we're starting to make a name for ourselves. The kayak fishing industry is really starting to mature and come around and it's growing so much that... You know, I, I think there's a lot of sponsor dollars starting to roll into our sport here. So yes, this sir. year, whenever people can set themselves apart in the field, like you're saying, you're seeing where some other I-Rod, I mean, it, you're just seeing a lot of brands who aren't haven't necessarily been in the kayak fishing industry space before starting to move in. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely the year. If you were ever thinking about fishing some big events and making a name for yourself, this is the year to do it. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, but yeah, I, I I really think like you're saying, kayak guys and kayak women. I'm sorry, uh, versus bass boat, fiberglass, glitter boat folks. I think they stack up. I fished both, and there's people in both who are just they're on. It's a different, it's different, but it's the same. Anybody who you know, anybody in the kayak space can go over there and do the same thing and knock their lights out too. Yep. Yeah. I agree, and and I'll I'll speak to another piece that you were talking about there is getting that recognition and the sponsors starting to come in. They are they're starting to pour in. Um, Bass has been huge for that. You know, Chad's been driving this for a long time. Hobie doing what they're doing. All of these things together are creating this atmosphere and. People are taking it seriously because on my side of things and what I do, I'm seeing it on a daily basis. I'm seeing new brands trying to target the kayak space, you know, um, and it's really cool. It's really cool as anglers and it's really cool as fans to watch that happen. So speaking of Hobie um, and what they got going on, they had a big event this past weekend too. Uh, They did. Lake Fork. Yeah, 155 anglers. That's massive i mean i think now with logan martin with bass everybody's going to kind of look at that and where they're setting the bar super high with how many people are fishing in that but last year if you would have said 155 anglers are fishing an event it'd blow you away so you know congrats to aj and their whole team for putting on a great event from what everybody said and 155 anglers is amazing um and again the names that were that were up there our names that you've heard before. Yeah. Um, somebody who had all the momentum going into it from last year, the, you know, from KBF and this year from the 10 already, Mr. Russ Snyder's with the win, 192 and a quarter. Damn Second near was... called his shot. Yeah. He, when uh, we recorded he, with him. I mean, he didn't like 100% come out and say, hey, I'm going to go down there and win it. But he did almost pretty much claim, you know, pulled a Babe Ruth and said, I'm going to Texas and I'm winning that event. And, uh, yeah, he did it. He, I mean, he is fishing on a different level. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, watch out. This guy is pulling something that we have not seen yet. I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to predict it right now. He is going to have 
a season that is going to be unbelievable. I fully expect this train to keep rolling. Um, him to pull some Jacob Wheeler type numbers in the kayak scene. Um, if he's pulling up to a ramp and you're fishing that tournament, watch out. He is coming for your money. Um, and uh, I'm loving watching it. But uh, yeah, two other great anglers to talk about in that top three as well. Yeah, and Russ, and he's committed now and doing it full time. And and in between the 10 and Lake Fork, those are completely different kind of fisheries. It, that he's yeah. not a one-trick pony. He's not whatever. He he can go out and win anywhere. I mean, I don't know about smallmouth so much. We'll see later this year. I guess yeah. I'll be his biggest test. But, he I mean, he lives well in Tennessee. Up the trail. He did well up at yeah. the Trail Series Championship up in Wisconsin, yeah. too. This That's guy, right. he, he, is, he is an all-around great angler. He understands preparation he understands tackle he understands the fish he's got it figured out he's someone that you're going to have to watch out for for a long time to go to come so uh yeah shout out to russ yeah total natural Mm -hmm. just one of those people that just have it but uh second you know maybe the biggest name in our sport a little bit of controversy but mr ron champion congratulations to him yeah with 182 182 and a quarter uh, third was Matthew Scotch, and he had said before that Lake Fork, although he's known to be the Texas guy, Lake Fork, that that he had traditionally done poorly there. Mm. So to see him come out and be third at 155 people, that's amazing, with 170 and a half. And there's so many anglers will do fourth and fifth. Guillermo Gonzalez, 170 and a half, and Matt Ramey with 168.75. So congratulations to all them. But those top three, top four, top five, I mean, you you hear these names over and over, and it's a uh, it's it's amazing what they're able to do. Absolutely, and I, and I'll say after day one of this event, I thought Matt had it wrapped up. I thought yeah. this guy is going to conquer Lake Fork. He's going to claim it. He's going to continue his role in Texas with 106 inches uh, after day one. He led by what more than t- 12 inches. Um, but day two, he stumbles, and Lake Fort gets him as it typically does. Uh, he had 63 inches. So luckily, he had a stellar performance on day one, or he would have been further down on the leaderboard. But continuing to prove his dominance, not only in the state of Texas, but just uh, as an angler in the sport of kayak fishing, he's got it going on. And you mentioned a little bit about Ron Champion, um, the controversy going on there. We're not going to sit here and talk about it. Look, Here's the thing. There are people in power that are going to make the right decisions here, and they're going to handle it, and we're going to trust them to do it. We're, we don't have all the facts. No one does yet. Um, so we're, we're not going to go there. What I will say, though, is get you a catch board. Catch, catch board. You catch know. right there if you're gotta watching. Catch. Got to love the catch. Show, it solves all these show problems. Sponsor. Show sponsor. That's right. We love you, catch. Uh, but, no, you know, the thing is, um, will we see changes from this? Possibly. Um, I, I don't know. But uh, hopefully this all kind of blows over and we can continue doing doing what we do, which is uh, catching fish and having fun. So I, I think the two big things to me are, one, he didn't break any rules, and two, Hobie has cleared them. So, I mean, and that's all you can say. You can you can have your how you feel about it. You can what you think about it, whether it should be changes. Those two things are the things that matter most. Yeah, I I think every he's you have to give someone like and I'm not going to get on rant about it either. But you have to give somebody who's done it for so long and is so respected in our sport the benefit of the doubt for him not to break the rules and to be cleared by Hobie. I'm I'm on his side. So. Yeah, you know, uh, great points there. All great points made, and and, and rules may be changed. Rules may be changed, mm-hmm. but Hobie has said, "Hey, Ron was playing in the rules. They made the decision. They made the call. Ron's number two in the story, um, and we move on. We move on." Yep. So, with that being said, that that concludes the two major events uh, that happened last weekend. But I know you got a you got some other awesome events to talk about. Yeah, we have a few other ones. The first is Sunshine State Trail on Lake George. That's St. John's River, the biggest lake down there. And traditionally where, uh, like, whenever the Bassmaster FLW go during a spawn, everybody bunches up on Lake George. Um, 
That was had 21 anglers. Uh, first was William Mansfield with 82 and a half. Second was Michael Nielsen with 78 and a quarter. And third was Jerry Burdine with 76 and three quarters. So congratulations to all of them. Um, next is East Texas Kayak Fishing Trail. It was on Lake of the Pines, Texas. That had 51 anglers, so a good field there. First was Dave Newman with 90 and three quarter. James Perry. Oh, last name's got to be a good guy there. Uh, 78 and a quarter. Now and we know third, why you and- picked that tournament. <laughs> uh, third, Andrew Middlebrook with 75 and a half. And last, way out west, we had the KBF Trail on Lake uh, Folsom Lake out in California that had 60 anglers. And that was also in conjunction with the Yakabass Trail. So there might have been some people who didn't fish one but fished the other. But the top three were both number one in both. So um, first, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his first name. It's J-I-O-N-G. B O Zhang. So I I won't try there. Congratulations to him, Mr. Unpronounceable Name. I'm sure he's a hell of a guy. Mr. Zhang. Mr. Zhang, there you go. Uh eighty seven. He had eighty seven inches flat. Second was Damian Tao with eighty two and a quarter. And third, Anthony Garcia, eighty inches. And you know, we talk about West Coast guys on here as much as we can. They definitely do not get the love. And all three of these guys, they beat a lot of names that the traditional names that you hear out west that uh so i mean they they definitely beat a stack field congratulations to them and and we try to highlight west coast anglers anytime we can if you have any trails that you want to talk about that you want to say you know uh maybe we haven't looked at it you want to send some stuff in message us on facebook and we'll try to get you on because not everybody uses tourney x but uh just message us and we'll, we'll we'll read what happens to try to promote your trail too absolutely uh yeah they're those uh those western anglers are true sticks um so pretty cool what lake were they on again they were on Folsom, so Folsom. clear lake clear yeah. deep lake yep 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 Folsom's uh Folsom's a cool lake i uh, got a couple buddies out there that uh, love that lake so um all right well good stuff man thanks for the uh, for the recaps there pretty pretty good stuff all, all right, right so let's let's talk about what's coming up this weekend and then we'll get into the big bass nation event coming up so coming up this weekend we got santi cooper kbf trail series heading to south carolina i think it is right santi cooper south carolina yeah yep Yep, one of those blue back herring lakes right this is uh this is a becoming i think kind of becoming a staple within the trail series um you know big event down there and uh event host for that is cka which is the carolina kayak anglers so pretty cool they got uh quite a few anglers signed up for this 92 uh 92 anglers signed up for the trail series some of the names in here i know are guys signed up for the bass event coming up later in the week so some guys going to be putting in uh, some miles but denny romero's in there we got uh Eric Nelson, Troy Morgan, Corey Dreyer, Corey yeah. Dreyer, Cody Milton in the field. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, and that's Eric, just a, Eric Brundle, yep. Derek, Jason Broach. Yep. yep. Just to name a few of the uh, the sticks in this one. So that's going to be Matt Ball coming down from Ohio. So that's going to be a good event as always. Looking forward to to that uh, great turnout for that event. I'm sure there'll probably be a couple more pop in there tomorrow and Friday. Um, so you know, probably around 100 anglers for that one. That's going to be awesome. Real Tree DZ Catch NRS uh, sponsoring that event. So pretty cool Catch. stuff there. Yep, just to name a few of them. I saw uh, Tacticam came on with uh, KBF. Huh. So yeah, found them that. last year at last year at the uh, Bassmaster Classic Expo. They were trying to just starting to get their stuff out there. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and then also going on during uh, the weekend there, Santi Cooper. While Santi Cooper's going on, you've got uh, the CKFG. So that's Clarksville um, Kayak Fishing group or something like that i don't know clarksville area kayak fishing group yep there you go clarksville Ten- tennessee. Area. so that's the part i know it's tennessee 
uh, they're going to be fishing Kentucky what, Lake, the Kentucky Lake, going out of going out of Paris, I think, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So that'll be a fun one. Uh, this time of year, things should really be getting ready to start popping there on Kentucky Lake. Uh, however, there's been some cold fronts coming through, so it's going to make that one interesting. They had what 12, 15 guys signed up for that one as well. Uh, yep. So cool little, uh, cool little group tournament there. And then heading down to one of our favorite clubs to cover, Natural State Kayak Anglers out of Arkansas, the Natural State. I think. Uh, they've got uh, they've got a quite a big turnout, 60, 60 anglers, I think, for that one. Um, that's their season opener, I believe. And, uh, yeah, let's see. I think it was 30, 30 guys signed up for that one already. Garrett Morgan going to be fishing that. Uh, he's always one to watch out for. Definitely a leader in the pack out there at the Natural State. So it should be a good good event. I know he was uh, practicing the last couple days, so he put up a little video today of a, a pretty good-sized largemouth he caught. So that will be cool. Yep, and yeah, definitely some great, great anglers there in the Natural State for sure. Yeah, they got some awesome water, and they're so close yeah. to so many big fish factories, you know. Um, and it, even, you know, all that south, all the beautiful southwest uh, Missouri stuff, Table Rock and all that, that yeah. that is just so close to Arkansas, too. And it, definitely a good place to live if, if you're a fisherman. Yeah, you know, that Tennessee, Alabama area, and then that Arkansas area, I think, are two, some of the most primed locations to be as a tournament angler who likes to travel. Because uh, yep. you just have some really great fisheries. Indiana's not too bad because, you know, we're not too far from the north, not too far from the south. But, uh, you know, Tennessee, Alabama, I think, is still the the mecca for for uh, tournament anglers for sure. Which is why you see so it many does, pros that relocate there. It doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. I know, I know you know. <laughs> I know you know. Yeah. You're, uh, there, what, south side of Birmingham kind of area? Yeah, just... 20 minutes south so right in the middle of the state like north central of the state but uh, alabama we're just so blessed with so many different kind of fisheries from smith lake ultra clear water to gunnersville and those are so close to each other that it's a that that's why you see a lot of people come out of alabama because you get tested so much here not not that you don't other places because we don't have many smallmouth but it's it's definitely a place that'll keep you on your toes because all the lakes are different yeah. Right. Absolutely. So that's what's coming up this weekend. And then next week, this is a first. We're going to yeah. we're going to be covering a tournament that's happening on a Thursday. Single day tournament. If yeah. if you haven't heard about this one, I I don't know where you've been. Uh because this thing has had all the attention, all the news. We've been talking about it a ton. And uh, Thursday, next week, Bass Nation kicks off the Kayak Trail Series in your home state. That's right. On Logan Martin. And it's got a whole lot of people in it and a whole lot of hammers. I mean, it's, this, Ooh, this that's, field that's the understatement on, of the year. Yeah. 232 people who were, I mean, they're just the who's who of kayak fishing because everybody wants that chance to be the first person to win a bass event, a bass kayak event. And, and everybody, at least the top 10 people are going to get to walk up on the stage and live a childhood dream of walking across a bass master classic stage. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a it's a whole lot of money to me to pay two hundred and fifty dollars to fish a one day event. I mean that's that's a lot, but you just I just couldn't miss it. Just the, all the opportunity. It's it's going to be it's going to be fun. Yeah, man, uh, you summed it up very well right there. I've I've made my thoughts and feelings on this very clear, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about kind of what we're what we're thinking and prepping and doing here in just a second but uh yeah 232 anglers it's just unreal to me unreal yeah. and, and if, even if even if you didn't sign up for it and you've never been to the Bassmaster classic expo if you're not that far away come 
it's worth the drive. Not only all the deals on tackle, and uh, it's a lot of you'll get a lot of new releases. The only it's the biggest releases to the public because everything else will come out at iCast. If you want to see the biggest release, releases in bass fishing, it's the place to be. It's awesome to watch the boats come in, the excitement. It's awesome. In Birmingham, there's plenty of stuff to do. There's a lot of great food. Uh, there's things to do, and it's just a great time. So even if you didn't make it, you didn't want to pay the money, and you didn't get in the event, come out and check it out. It, I, I guarantee it's a good time. If you're into bass fishing and kayak fishing, come it'll be worth it i promise yeah and and with that being said next week's episode is going to be a little bit different because you and i we're going to the not only are we going to be fishing in this event next week we're also going to be at the expo afterwards so we're yeah. going to do something different next week we're going to be actually going live from the bassmaster expo for for our uh, for our episode, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be unique. It's gonna be different. Um, it's something that we've not even worked out the details on. I'm just kind of springing it on Dan right now. Uh, but let's do it. You know how cool will that be to be at the Bassmaster Classic doing a live episode uh, next Friday? Uh, it'll be probably a condensed episode, but we'll try and we'll try and figure out the details, figure out who's gonna be there and be a part of that. But that's gonna be really cool. Um, so yeah, if you're listening, make sure to be watching our social media pages over the next uh, few days and watch out for this live edition of the reel down from the Bassmaster classic Friday, what the eighth, I think it is. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Friday the eighth might be wrong on the date, but yeah, next Friday live, the reel down Bassmaster classic. So be ready. That's all I got to say. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be fun. So, but the, uh, the yeah. sixth. I'm sorry. But. The sixth. Okay. Yeah. I was t I was two days ahead of time, but that's all right. So, f there you go. You guys have been warned. Uh, with that being said, the actual video or the actual recording may not be available on the podcast as early as normal, uh, but uh, we'll do that fairly early in the morning at the expo. That way, that we can get it uploaded to you guys as soon as possible who are listening to the podcast so let's uh let's do this let's read off some of those hammers let's give some oh, of, let's, Lord. let's let's read off some of the hammers in this event and then let's me and you kind of talk a little bit about our preparation going into this so i'm going to start from the bottom and just kind of scroll up um and I, yeah. let me let me start off by saying there are going to be some big names that don't get mentioned here. I'm just going oh, to kind yeah. of randomly talk about some of them that I see here. Um, so excuse me if you're watching on YouTube. I'm kind of looking away from you guys at my monitor here. Um, but uh, And we'll also we'll drop links to all of these tournaments in the, uh, the YouTube description so that you guys can follow along live as they're going on. But it is unreal. Brandon Watson of Alabama. I mean, local stick. That, that dude... Uh, he fishes North Alabama. He destroyed everyone in the Angler of the Year. And North Alabama has 70-plus people at every event. He didn't just – it wasn't even close. There was only four events – or I'm sorry, five events. He had it Angler of the Year won by the third event. And yeah. he put everybody else out. He is amazing. He – it is. And, and here's the thing. If you go and you look at um, Tourney X – you're going to pull his profile up, and you're not going to see much. And you'll be like, what are they talking about? Listen, Alabama, they don't use turning X a whole lot. A lot of no. those clubs are old school. They're still giving me cash at the ramp, turning your photos at the ramp. They're doing it old school. Nothing wrong with that. But I just wanted to bring attention to that name because um, he's a stick. He's a hammer. A lot of people may not know him. Um, locally, he is he's a local hero, um, a local stick. On social media, another one too, Jared Atwell. He's I know he's won the state championship, the state classic yeah. here in Alabama. So that's two guys from Alabama, local Alabama guys who are you probably haven't heard of, but they will take your money. Absolutely, yep. So there's a couple big local stick names that uh, we just pulled out there. If you haven't heard those guys, go look them up. Uh, but uh, oh hey, Craigie's coming. I didn't know that. Craigie, Dakota Lithium coming down playing around josh stewart oh lord 
Senko. Oh, and, hey, man. and Logan, and Logan Martin, could play. you're talking about a Senko Lake for sure. So yeah, he, he could, could, he'll be up there. Yep, that could definitely play, especially with the weather conditions and what's going on in that lake right now, which we'll get to in a little bit. Ben Spangler of Arkansas, another natural state angler that's just a true stick. My gosh, Russ Snyder's. Oh, if he's not your favorite, you're crazy right now. You, like he, it's he, it's hard for me yeah, to pick against him. He has to be. Yeah. If 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 Vegas had odds, he would have the highest odds right now. Uh, yeah. Some other ones are. Last week we had on Katie and Ryan back a the mm. power couple out of Texas. Uh, Matt Ball, Good Kurt Lord. Smith, yeah. Eric Siddiqui, Matthew Scotch, Fluke Master, Chad Hoover, Casey Reed, Jody Queen. Oh, who's this guy? Dan Perry. Hey, Local that's me. Stick. Ky- Local Kyler, stick, Dan Perry. Kyler Bronham, Jason Broach. Uh, good. I, Jackson Orr. Jackson Orr, people. Like, it's still school season. How is this happening? <laughs> he shouldn't be allowed. Get back to school, Jackson. If you're listening, man, this isn't okay with me. No, I'm, Brad, I'm happy to see him there. Yeah. Brad Case, he's from Mississippi. Uh, Frog won't play, but hey. No telling what he's, you know, he's old and wily. Ron Champion just got second. Cody um, Milton. AJ McWerther. You, oh, Lord. Mr. Hobie himself is fishing yep. it. I, I'll tell you a name. This is, and this is going to be another local guy. He used to be, he used to win a bunch of events uh, whenever Drew Gregory was doing his river bass and trail. And one of his homies is a guy who fishes here in the Iron City Cack Anglers. Mr. Lance Cooley, this dude will go up and some, I mean, he's ultimate hooked on water, wa- wild waters kind of guy. He'll go back and fish places that people are afraid to go. I mean, he'll, he'll go back there. I've heard some crazy mythological kind of stories of this man going back and fishing stuff that no, that like no fish has ever seen a lure kind of guy. So watch out for him. You'll never see him out on the main lake, but he'll come in with some mega bag. Uh, Goodness. Jim Davis, Caleb Davis, Barry Davis. We got all the Davises. Jamie Dennison, Ryan uh, Lambert, Lord. yeah, Corey Dreyer, Craig Dye. Just and thank. I just saw Craig Dye on Instagram. Uh, one of his sponsors, Ray Marine, just gave away Element Seven. So a lot of times we talk about they're not a sponsor of the show, but support the companies that are supporting kayak fishing for a, uh, you know, for a. a Graph GPS company. I come out and just give away things. You know, big big ups to Ray Marine for doing that. Uh, yeah, Craig Dice, stand up guy too, and he's, you know, he's always going to do good. Mike Elsie, the national reigning national champion. Yep. Tim Jeff Isaacs. Fader. Good Lord, Christine Fisher. I mean, it, you know, she she did okay at Lake Fork, and I think she, you know. She said that she learned some things from that event, and that's scary. What else did she have to learn? I know her and AJ got here today. I saw them on Facebook say that they're already in town, so they're practicing up. Watch out for both of them. Yeah, Ron <clears throat> Champion, Brad Case. Yeah, Guillermo Gonzalez just got fourth in Texas. Uh, he's good everywhere. Uh, John Graves. Drew Gregory, there's Drew Gregory himself yeah. coming over here trying to take our money again. You uh, get in the yeah. top ten of this event, and you got something to say for yourself. That's all yeah. there is to it because you've literally got to be the best in the game in order to get in the top ten. And, and did to, you say Chad Hoover? I Mr. did. Mr. Hoover himself? Oh, okay. Hoover himself. Gene Jensen, the fluke master, Matt Ball. I mean, all of it, we could go on and on. Out of this 232 angler field is made up of the best of the best in the sport, and it is going to be an absolute slugfest, and it's only a single-day event. Not because I'm in it, but this has to be the greatest assembly of kayak fishermen in the history of fishing, right? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's been some national championships that were obviously yeah. really well stacked as well. But, yeah, we have pulled all of the layers 
in on this one. All the anglers that um, we all know so well and who have proven that Mel Ash, another one that just sticks out, you yeah. know, that have proven themselves time over time to to be leaders in, in the pack. And it's rare that you see all of them in one event. And it's just, it's hard for me to stay focused as an angler and as a competitor because as a fan, I'm just mesmerized by what's about to go down here. But I'll get focused. Don't worry. It's coming. Yeah. Um, I mean, so there, there, there's no... If, if you're a fan of kayak fishing, there's no way you can't be a little bit of fanboy or fangirl whenever you see this kind of list and, and you're going to see these people and be a part of it and the history that they're going to make. It's, you know, it's, it's a truly amazing time to be in this sport and, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. It is now, but I will say come tournament day, you've got to be able to set all of that aside and focus on you and the job that you have to do and the guys who keep their nose in it and the guys who can do that can eliminate all the noise, all the pressure, all the anglers are going to see around them and focus on the task at hand. Those are going to be your top 10 guys. Those are going to be your guys that are going to make a run at this thing at the win. Um, let's talk a little bit about what we think it'll take to win. Uh, that post was, I think somebody made that post yesterday or maybe earlier today that, so that conversation starting to happen. Um, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about what we think it'll take to win. When that question was asked, what I threw out there, uh, it was actually asked, what do you think will take to cut a check? So it's top 30, right? I think it's a check. Um, is it? Oh, so one other person. Oh, I mean, Jeff Mallett, Mr. KBN, and Jordan yep. Marshall, who got fourth at the Hobie Tournament of Champions from Tennessee. I know that guy can come down here and sack him up, too. So it's uh, if we missed anybody, we apologize, like you yeah, said. Yeah, we did. It's, There's no doubt we yeah. didn't miss people. It's oh, just oh, that yeah. stacked. Uh, we could do an episode of just talking about each of these guys. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So, guy puts up, you know, what's it going to take to cut a shit? I think it's going to take in that 77 range just to cut a yeah. check i think it's going to take to be in that top 10 i think it's going to be in the high 80s 88 um is, is the mark that i put i don't know if you agree with that or not but that's kind of what i think it'll take to get into the the check cut and the top 10 cut and then to win it man it's hard for me to answer that one based off of what i'm seeing in the research and, and you'll be able to talk about this more because you're local but based off of what i'm seeing it's really going to depend on what this weather does if this thing yeah. pops like it could it could take 98 to 102 inches if it holds back a little bit we could be looking at 92 95 inches to win this thing so um i'll let you kind of give your insights on that but that's where that's where i'm thinking so that's what i'm going to predict at this point i would say i mean you're, you're right there too so you know 77 for a check 70 in between 76 and 77 for a check uh, 86 to 87 top 10 and then somebody is going to have a big bag that low 90s i'll say 92 and a half that's what i put on facebook that's yeah. what i would guess uh but this lake, and then right underneath the top cash in a check, you're going to have a lot of people bunched up because this Logan Martin's filled with fish. Yeah. It, you're not going, it's not going to be a lake where you're going to come here and struggle to catch a fish. It's going to be a struggle to catch the big ones. And those big spots, if you're fishing just for spots, that's awesome because I've seen a couple guides online on Facebook posting stuff up the last couple days. People are, I mean, they're coming in with. 30 and 50 fish days of good fish yeah. and they've got you know that high 17s 18 pound bags which is you know what what is 18 pound bag i don't 90 low 90s right around yeah. you know yeah, well it depends because 90, what people what people yeah, have to spots, keep in mind mouth. this is spots and large mouth and that goes back to what i was saying if this thing pops so if if this weather trend that we're seeing this little warming trend really warm nights due to cloud cover sunny days cloud cover at nights if it happens like they're predicting and of course you know depending on where you look it's showing yeah. different things but if it pops and those large mouth suck up shallow and a guy can get a really good mixed bag 
of those largemouth, that's where I think you could see those high 90s um, taking it to win. Um, and I think even even if it's low 90s, you're still going to have to have either some largemouth mixed in or just get on some donkey spots to yeah. hit that. It's it's possible. I mean, the, those five-pound spots, they're hard to come by. Uh, threes are pretty dang plentiful. They, I mean... You know, they're not jumping in the kayak, but, you know, you can catch threes. It's not a big problem. Fours are a little bit tougher. Fives are super hard to come by. Uh, Largemouth. You don't hear of any, like, you know, 10-pound bass coming out, you know, largemouth coming out of Logan Martin. But there's plenty of fours and fives in there. So, I mean, you can catch them. And and I've I've heard of six and seven-pound spots coming out of that. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's a few. I've never caught a six. I've caught a five and a half. That's my my big spot. That's but the uh, and that was on so. Mitchell. Yeah, two lakes down. But the, I mean, there's definitely the the potential, the possibility of somebody catching, you know, one of those giant bags. It it can happen. Like you say, if things line up, the stars align. Right now, the fishing's great. Uh, today it was possible flurries. It's getting down into the 30s, and it's going to stay th- stay there for this weekend. But after that. Looking like a warming trend where things could get right and, you know, things could get out of hand and be a real good tournament. But because there's so many fish, um, almost it's not going to be like Seminole where almost half the field only catches one or zeros. It's a lot of people are going to catch a lot of fish and it's going to be fun to fish. And uh, but a lot of people are going to have a decent, you know, that in the 60s. But just trying to weed through those fish and catch and find some good ones. That's going to be the tougher thing to do with this event. Absolutely. Now, do you think there's going to be any concerns of safety with high water or uh, fast current debris, anything like that? I know that this lake is one that comes up in a hurry, but they drop it quick too. So you see yeah. anything like that? Any concerns there? I think if if it were held this weekend, yes, it would be an issue. But it's um, th- because we have gotten, I think we've gotten 18 inches of rain this month whenever we usually only get four. So it's been, they almost turned us into a rainforest. So they, uh, it, it's been bad. It's been super high water, ultra muddy. Today it sprinkled a little bit. It's supposed to not rain really through the weekend, maybe like 10, 20% chance. And then going into next week, it's definitely going to rain a couple of days, 40%, 50%. But I don't think – I think it's actually going to clear up some. I think tournament day, it's going to be a lot better than what it has been. But I, I don't think high water or anything like that is going to be an issue. Now, I will say I would not be fishing by the lower – by the uh, Lay Lake Dam on the bottom. You will be – there will be a tremendous amount of current and they'll be ripping it through there and it'll probably have the fish biting, but I would urge everyone for your own safety. Do not fish near the lower dam because there's some kids right now who are on pickwick. Mm. Uh, there was a turn. There was a tournament last weekend where it was a high school tournament, two kids and one of them's dad. They found the boat and they're still been missing for a few days. So things aren't looking good for them. So and that was with high water, a lot of current. Although the Tennessee yeah. River is different than the Coosa, it's still the same thing. A lot of moving water and a dam, and uh, and they have the locks all the way open. I mean the the floodgates all the way open. So it's moving so fast that there won't be anything to stop you going through in a kayak. You'll just, you know, a hundred foot drop and game over. So please, you can fish down that lower area, but don't be anywhere near the dam it's it's not worth risking your life fishing somewhere that's going to be that dangerous that that'd be the only thing i'd say very good but on 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 thursday um you know logan martin is a lake all the lakes here in alabama gunnersville lay all of them get a tremendous amount of fishing pressure we just we have a lot of fishermen but on thursday i think we'll be okay with that there'll definitely be some people practicing for the weekend but i'm not as concerned with boat traffic uh it's not you know, a lot of people, you're in this kind of tournament, just the way you navigate the river up and down is fairly narrow. The bottom opens up, the lower end opens up some more, but it's not somewhere where it's wide open where you can get hit, like out on Kentucky Lake fishing a ledge. So that 
I don't think that's as big of a concern. And luckily, it's on a Thursday. Uh, you know, unfortunately for my vacation time, I have to lose a day, but <laughs> it's good for <laughs> good for boat traffic. But yeah, so really, just that lower dam is the thing I'd worry about. I'm I, I'm I am a little bit worried about somebody going down there, a lot of money on the line and doing something stupid. So don't don't do that. Yep, don't do it. It's not worth it. There's plenty of good fishing throughout that lake. You do not need to put yourself in a situation. And if you if you're unsure, you just don't know if it's safe or not, just avoid it. Go somewhere where yep. you know you're safe. Don't don't risk it. Um, if you don't know there's if you don't know the situation that you're in or you don't uh, you don't know how to handle it or not sure if it's safe or not, then just avoid it. So um, all right. Well, so I'm kind of curious, and, and we're going to have to be delicate about this conversation because you also <laughs> don't want to give too yeah. much information away, but I am kind of curious, and I want to have this conversation about your preparation versus mine. You're someone that's got a ton of history here. You know the waters. You you know the area. You live less than an hour from, from a ramp yeah. versus me. My only experience in Alabama is Gunnersville. I've never looked at Logan Martin prior to this event, maybe watched some Bassmaster stuff or FLW stuff in the past, but without any real, you know, um, deep dive into it. So I'm kind of curious about your preparation versus mine. And I think it might make for a decent little, uh, a decent little conversation here real quick. So for the listeners, so let's talk about that real quick. What, what's going into your preparation? How are you handling this event? You know, um, I think one thing that in this event, more than anything else, I'm more worried about is the lack of launches. Okay. In this event, Logan Martin, it's a great lake. Like I've said, good fishing. But with the minimum amount of ramps for a kayak tournament, all the, it's a great place to have a kayak tournament. It's going to be an issue. It's flat what out going to be an 8, issue. 10, 12 ramps? Yeah, uh, maybe a dozen, but about half of them are on the lower end. So, and, the and lower it seems end, like yeah. some of them are kind of basically right next to each other. They're Real not close. spread out, right? No. And, and there's and you'll miles see, of this lake that have no ramp access. Yeah, so for some people like me that don't have a motor, you have to take that into account in this tournament, especially because there's just some places you just flat out can't get to without a motor now for you some other people i do that's going to open up a little bit more territory but uh it's it's the lake's definitely not made for kayak fishing uh steve owens the tournament director has put on there that some people can do it's legal to do a float which means two people buddy up you launch from one place and get out at another you can't use an uber or anything obviously anything like that and when outside the tournament so I think that's going to be a strategy. Some people buddying up. Maybe you've never seen that before in a tournament, but I think that's something that's definitely going to play this time where there's going to be some people doing a float. There's, And I, I'm talking from like mid-lake down, not right, up not north or anything. Full. No, not river stuff. I'm, I'm talking like people are going to start at the... I mean, there's only a few ramps. Riverside, I think it's Riverside, Chocolock, Chocoloco, however you say that creek. Um there's some uh, poorhouse branch or some other ones that some people are going to start and they're going to work their way down mid lake and, or they could do it at the upper end of the lower lake. And I'm saying the lower, lower end by Riverside down. So there's really three sections to, Lo to Logan Martin. There's a bottom to Riverside and then it turns East. You have there to, let's say up to the I 20 bridge, that would be mid lake. And then above that, it turns into a river. And then you have the dam up there. So uh, there's not going to be many people fishing up north. Down south, there's a lot more launches. But the people fishing in the middle, it's going to be a problem. Uh, I'm not So that's been a big consideration for me. Because if there's some cool spots that are in the mid lake, you know, I might not be able to get to them. So it's opened up the lower end because there's more launches. So that that's something that you think about in every tournament, but this one specifically has been something I've thought about more than other ones. And and you just don't know how many people are going to be there until you get get there that morning. So, sure. you know, you, you really don't even know going in 
how many people are going to be there until you get there the day of, and then there's 50 people trying to launch it, you know, at one ramp that can only hold 20 trucks. It's it's going to get ugly. Right. Okay. So so that's been my my biggest one. The regular Google Earth and Avionics. Um, I really haven't thought about history as much in this one. Okay. It's probably I haven't fished there since last fall. Uh, I mean, I practiced here the last couple of weeks, but. You know, I, I don't fish there that often, even though it's a great lake. Um, just not a lot of tournaments that I fish, fish out of there. We usually have one a year with Iron City. Uh, last year, I, I did pretty good there. Uh, yeah, it, it's there's a, there's a lot to look at. It's a long lake. I think it's 50-something miles, but it's a long lake and a lot of water to cover. So, yeah. How about you? So, I think... Um the my original plan has shifted a little bit um for some of the same reasons you were just talking about the the number of anglers that are going to be there i think it's going to be important to find areas in which you can get away from it so that's what i'm looking at um i'm going to try and put at least four or five days of practice in i'm going to try and hit a lot of stuff um in that time frame but i'm going you know, I'm going to spend a lot of time looking for things that are not necessarily so obvious um, yeah. and things that are out off the bank. Uh, as I've talked about before, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of guys sit in the bank and that's probably a smart play um, because this time of the year, that's where they're going to move up. And if you get in that right group or that right school, it could be lights out all day and you could just walk home with a bunch of money and an awesome trophy. But I think it could also be done deep. So I'm going to play there a little bit, um, try and find some different things. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to let it get too much into my head how many guys are out there because still I have to do a job. Um, and I'm going to, what I've, what I've been doing with my map study is this time of year it's a little easier to identify certain things, um, where fish are going to stage and that sort of stuff. So what I've been trying to do is I've actually been color coding with marks similar types of structure. So similar types of points within certain depth ranges, um, you know, places where I know there's brush piles, places where I know there's rock, places that are current driven. So I'm really kind of color coding things so that when I do get to practice, get on that pattern, you can I get on that pattern. I can then go, all right, let me go to my map and see how many ramps are within areas in which I can hit similar stuff. Um, so that's kind of been my strategy here over the last week. I've really started kind of dialing that down um, and color coding to to make sure that I can be really efficient in my practice. Cause I think that's what's going to come down to, um, is covering water and being really efficient in practice. Um, so that's my strategy so far, as far as baits and stuff like that. Um, man, just, I'm going to move, I'm going to cover a lot of water. Um, so moving baits for practice and then I'll start kind of dialing it down, but I'm going to take a ton of tackle on the water. <laughs> a ton yeah. of tackle i'm not going to sit here and tell you there's going to be five rods and five baits it's going to be like 12 rods and a couple hundred baits like because i don't know i'm i've not fished all year i've not fished in alabama this time of year uh, definitely never fished logan martin so um it's going to be interesting i'm super excited though to get the rust knocked off and start fishing this weekend um, i'll probably be there saturday morning to fish or maybe uh maybe get in on saturday i'm not sure yet depends on how the week goes but uh the week's almost up I, I i will say that logan martin maybe more than other lakes to me it kind of you when you find them you find them yeah. like if it's that certain spot if it's a dock if it's a point or whatever it is whenever you find them you find a bunch of them so it's not i mean there'll be fish scattered all over but there's really those this is one of those lakes where you you can find something special it's not i don't think this event's going to be so much people junk fishing and catching one here catching one there i think they're going to find one or two really good spots but that's also a negative too because of the this field is ridiculous there's not going to be anything hidden you're not you're not going to bring up google earth and find some backwater area unless you're lance cooley and you're fishing 
some crazy, super shallow place that man has never seen. But they, uh, so yeah, th- there's not going to be anything hidden. This is, I mean, Tourney X calls it an elite level event. And although we don't have to qualify to get into it, it's just money. I think that this this tournament is going to show that way because everybody's going to find a lot of the same stuff. So, you know, I hope everybody is thinking about a plan A and a plan B and a plan C because whenever you get there that morning and, you know, you see Corey Dreyer, you see, you know, Ron Champion sitting on a spot that you thought was going to be your magic spot and it's not there, you better have a backup because there's not going to be anything hidden on this lake at, come Thursday. Yeah, I got a feeling there's going to be a few races happen yeah. um, at launch. I, I think, I don't, uh, you know, it's all fun and games until that bell rings. And when that bell rings or that gun goes off or whatever analogy you want to use here, I think you're going to see some guys gunning. Some people are going to be pedaling harder than they've ever pedaled. And some guys are going to be motoring and paddling and pedaling all at the same time. To yeah. uh, all three, all Just three get- to get because it, you're right, it's going to happen. A lot of guys are already practicing. A lot of guys are going to practice for four or five days, and and there's going to be this cross. Guys are going to find the similar stuff, and you're going to show up at the ramp in the morning, and everybody's going to be thinking, all right, where are you heading? Are you heading where I'm heading? And everyone's going to be racing. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be doing some go lives and stuff out on the water uh, during practice, during the event, and that sort of thing. Trying to cover it and give everybody a uh, bird's eye view of what's going on um, on the water. I know some other people have talked about doing similar things. So should be should be good. It will be a well-covered event. It will. For sure. It will be so well covered. And then, you know, again, like you said, if you're not fishing it, but you're in the area, definitely come check out the expo. Come to the weigh-in. Come support the kayak fishing community at the weigh-in. Make a bunch of noise for whoever is up there uh, because we do. We want to show the world how big and how awesome this is. Uh, We want to support our our brothers in the sport and sisters in the sport because there definitely could be some women up on that stage um as well you know big names sure. big sticks uh coming coming to uh come to the stage for sure so with that said i think we'll kind of wind this thing up um or down or whatever you want to say um we have some pretty cool stuff going on here at Paddle and Fan. I definitely want to make some announcements there. You know, we're running we're running six days a week right now. We just started the OG show is gone live. If you uh, if you haven't heard that yet or seen that announcement yet, make sure to check that out. The OG show is now live on Facebook on Monday nights at 7:30 Central, 8:30 Eastern. I think it is. So the OG show with Brian Schiller. Make sure to check that out. Uh, the go lives are always fun and cool to watch. You can go back and watch them after the fact if you miss them. And you can always listen to them um, on your favorite you know, platforms or on, watch them on YouTube. So that's always cool. Um, and then make sure to tune in next Friday as we go live from the Bassmaster Classic to record our episode. Uh, so we'll figure out the logistics of that and let you fill you all in as we go. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything. Go buy a catch board. That's right. Make sure you know questions. The best. No, no questions. flex. Nobody will question you. No, nope, nobody nope. will question you for flexing. So nobody will blow you up on social media for anything. You can't, uh, you can't alter it. So go get a catch board. That's, uh, that's my quick tip of the night. Um, other than that, guys, be safe on the water this weekend. If you're traveling to any of these events, be safe on the road. Look forward to seeing you all at the Bassmaster event, um, and we'll catch you next Friday live from the Bassmaster Classic. See y'all then. Where are your PDFs? Thanks. Later. Go check out the website, guys. Paddle the letter N and Finn.com. Also check out YouTube. 
youtube.com forward slash paddle and fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're doing giveaways, announcements, things like that at Facebook and Instagram at paddle and fin. Shout out to our show supporters, Rocktown Adventures, Leveling Canoe and Kayak, Hammered Lures, Fish Mob Lures, TRC Covers, Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com. You can put the Paddle and Fin logo right on your catch board. Don't forget to go over and pick up your Jig Masters jigs. Use promo code PNF20 and save 20% today. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps grow the audience, helps others find our podcast. So please drop a five-star rating in on the podcast platform you're listening on. Don't forget about the Recycled Plastics program, you guys. Take your used plastic baits, put them in an envelope, mail them to the address in the show notes. Our man Eric Richards at Hammered Lures melts those down, makes new baits, and donates them to various chapters of Heroes on the Water.